Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Chasing Collectibles Catch Up. I'm Tyler. I'm Tim. I'm Lauren. And uh, Jameis. And with us today we have Jameis Jokum. Uh he is a uh he's a writer um of multiple genres and uh we're he's here with us today to talk uh, all things writing. So uh welcome Jameis. Hey. So uh just level setting. Um I guess uh what do you do? What do you uh uh, I know you write, but uh, what kind of stuff do you write? Where where do you write it? Um, self publishing. What what all do you do? Um, mostly self publishing. Right now, the projects I'm working on are basically I've got a how to for writing, which is actually in, it's set up as uh, one book, but I'm going to end up probably splitting it to three. Um, I'm working on a superhero book, cool. and a um. Pretty much whatever, whatever looks interesting at the time. I see. Yeah, I remember you, before we before we started, you were you know I tried to ask you about you know what genre do you do, and you mentioned you kind of do a, a whole bunch of different stuff. So that's that's very cool. So how how long have you been been doing this? It uh, decades, years, just get started, or how long have you been probably, doing this? Probably a little over three decades. If I start from uh, when we started with the student newspaper back at uh, in Sacramento. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, awesome. And it's wow. been a smooth ride the whole time, I suppose. Not your writing, never a smooth ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of in the same boat with uh, being in music. You know, it's it's never a smooth ride, but it's always a fun ride. Right. Wow. All right. And and what would you say are uh some of the some of your favorite stories that you've written? Um there's Chinese Chess which is about a, a fa- fantasy story about a lieutenant of the guard who basically has a trek off and make a, a mutual defense pact with a dragon. Uh Hanami Neon which is my uh, cyberpunk which is Basically, it's, uh, ostensibly, it's about a guy just clearing the clearing his past out. Unfortunately, he's doing it in a rather violent method. Mm. Um, and right now, it'd probably be well, pretty much ask me pretty much any day of the week because I my monster anthology is just go, gets a little bit crazy. Gotcha. So, so are, you, are you working on multiple projects at the same time? Is what you're kind of saying? This time, yeah, definitely. Mm. That's got to be somewhat hard to keep track of, I would think. Um, not really. I've got a whiteboard that actually helps keep track of all that. Oh, I just have to actually, yeah, yeah. Kind of like, just, um, like a like a in the movies they would have a uh, storyboard. Well, more or less, it's basically just saying, "Hey, this is the stories you've gotten. You might want to work on them at some point." Yeah. Got it. Thanks to health issues, I've sort of taken a been forced into a two month vacation. So, mm. do you have any story? I mean, like you know, like other other projects from other people that you kind of feed off of. You know, things that other people work on. You know, you mentioned you mentioned monsters, and right away I think Godzilla. Oh no, the the monster project um, over on Vela is basically just a. Uh, Let's have fun with let's. It's basically a why we like monsters type of deal, and right now I'm basically dealing with the uh, relatively small humanoid type. Emphasis on sort of, geez, that gets weird. Um, but so it's just Frankenstein size, like uh, more or less humanoid type. I mean, it gets weird because well, if you have a werewolf, it's hard describing that just as a human type. Right. Yeah. Because of the size, because you know, the big hulking version. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, and that's been sort of weird because it's sort of exploring uh, sorts of different anywhere from really funny. Um, like I have a Gorgon who stones people in the marijuana sense. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, <laughs> and all the way to a little bit more serious where, um, you know, I've got a psycho killer and it's just. All it's just basically anything pretty much in between. I think I have a demon who ends us, a, a incubus who ends up having to go up against a serial killer at one point. 
yeah, all over the really all over the place. Yeah, yeah. But that's where I tend to like having fun. I mean, I get I tend to see a movie and get or something somebody else is working, like you said, and there's something that I that I think to me that you missed, and it's sort of be fun to play around filling in that crack or yeah. cracks, as the case may be. Yeah, well, that's what's fun about being a writer. You know, it's kind of like <clears throat> you get to kind of create this world, and then you kind of you go from there. You know, you can take. Um, you know, there's a lot of ideas that like basically have been done. Like it's hard to complete to create a, a completely brand spanking new idea because everything has influence. You know, there's a whole even like the very basic concept of like the hero's journey has been so many things has that basic concept, but you can take it in so many different directions. Yeah, and it's really fun trying to apply that to 1,700 words or less. Uh, so you do do you, you do a lot of uh, shorter stories then? Uh, literally depends on what I'm working on. Right. But sort of putting this into a little bit of perspective, you've got the monster, why we like the monsters, which is literally about 15, 1,500 to 2,000 words. You've got the writing book, which is, and that's it. It's just straight short stories. It's anthology all over the place. You then have the one project I'm working on right now, which is a superhero novel, which right now looks like it's going to be about, all told, probably about 50,000, 60,000 words. Wow. And then, of course, there's the how to writing thing, which is I keep trying to say 1,700 words, but the reality is the, the chapters end up being more closer to about 2,200, 2,500 words. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's the Riffs fanfic, which is just – I'm not really sure how to qualify that outside. I think it's going to be a book. might actually end up being a, a series, I hope. But, it get, but it's sort of weird. So, And the chapters there tend to be about 15 to 1,800 words. Well, you, you talk about the uh, the uh, I guess the advice book, right? The one that's like how, the how to book. Um, is there a piece of advice? Because I've I've been writing for a while, trying to get a as a science fiction book. I've been working on for quite a while, and I've you know done a lot of kind of self teaching and and, re and uh, listened to a lot of people and taking a lot of advice that's like really helped me grow as a writer. So, is there any advice that you think is like really important for for writers to know? Just because it keeps coming up, write what you want to write. You know, forget what, don't be embarrassed by it. Just go for it because you've got a lot of people who have a lot of really great stories, but they tend to get, they tend to feel embarrassed about what they're writing. And you can't do that. You have to write what you want to write, period. Right. No, I think that's true for sure. Yeah. And I'll, I would say one of the best pieces I've gotten is kind of like, um, I know like as writers, there's not like a lot of, you don't want to be constrained by rules, but there are certain things that like, I guess, guidelines that like, if you follow them, how you go about approaching them in your own unique style can right. uh, kind of make your stuff better. So like the whole uh, show versus tell uh, concept, which like sounds very mm -hmm. basic, the whole like, you know, show a character doing something rather than tell the reader that they're doing it. But it's a lot more complicated. Like you can, there's an entire book that I read just entirely on show versus tell um you know things as simple as like um saying uh someone reached for you know uh someone got up to open the door well that's a motivational tell why don't you just have yeah. the door to, the door gets knocked so the person stands up and you can you don't have to tell the reader that they're going to go get the door because you know they're going to get the door or something as simple as uh you know saying uh, so and so felt cold well that's not fun you know they're shivering they're you know there's they can feel i don't know their faces blush they're you know you it's off the top of my head but you know you can some rules they're not necessarily constricting but it helps you think about okay how can i do this in a better way that is better than just like oh he felt cold or he's sad you know yeah but see here's where i've got an advantage like i remember that going all the way back to the school paper mm -hmm. if i had if the other word of advice is take a journalism class because you learn real quick that when you've got to make a deadline and when you've got to be, have X number of words, you kill all that filler. You right. have to, by definition, show. You you stop – by learning how to do journalism, write, journalistic writing, you stop telling and you automatically instinctively start just telling, describing what's going on. Right. And because you're so keyed into the five W's and the one H, 
you're you know you're answering all those questions as you go, and so you're not really show, telling people with or telling people what's going on. You're just simply going straight into the description and just the descriptions that matter. The mm -hmm. um, example like was told today, for example, is if you know you hear somebody, you know, uh, some character hears a phone go off, you're not going to describe reaching for the bag, going into the bag, grabbing the phone out of the bag, you know, flick. You know, flipping the phone on, you're just basically going straight to answering the phone. Right. So you've done all, gotten rid of a lot of that extraneous filler because it's not important. You're going straight to the action that matters. Yeah, I think another one that kind of uh, in that same vein, like um, uh, like a uh, what's another one? Uh, I just lost my like personal that. favorite. Other than that, is kill your darlings. Even though my my version usually involves machine guns. What do you mean by that? Kill your darlings. Mm -hmm. Basically get rid of stuff you think is important, but really isn't. Yeah. Stuff you think is like really, really cool. I put all this work into it. I It's on my outline. I've got to stick to it and then realize it's a good piece of writing, but it doesn't work with what I'm doing. So, you know, kill yeah. your darling. Yeah. Like you said, though, mine usually involves machine gun and explosives. So... <laughs> Yeah, I guess another now you think about uh, yeah. this came back to me the whole like saying something like a smile appeared on their face. You're just like, where else would it appear? Or like if they like they touch this with their hands, it's like, are they touching it with their feet? Like you don't need to say, you know, it's like little things like that. Like, okay, you know, they're some of that some of that isn't necessarily wasting filler. The smile appeared on your face, for example, I actually don't mind so much. Mm -hmm. It's basically mm -hmm. because at that point. You know, that's because I'm used to smile. I, the problem with this is I've also taken an acting class, so you can have smile. You can have people smile using their eyes, for example. So having the smile appear on your face isn't necessarily that bad. Yeah, I mean, there are some that I think are more, I guess, forgivable than others, and they're also like they're, they're things in your toolbox. So just because you know, I think you can get to the extreme with these rules that you shouldn't just like adverbs. They say don't use adverbs a lot which are like the i don't know he he quickly rather than quickly be like he he ran or whatever but like you shouldn't you don't have to expunge all adverbs you should just try to use them sparingly yeah it's the thing about having a toolbox you have to realize is this the best tool the follow-up to that is know the rules but know when to break the rules or know when to ignore the rules mm -hmm. because sometimes as a writer you've got to there's a lot of really cool writing out there that Take Hemingway, for example. There's a lot of times when, you know, he's arguably one of the best writers ever, but he's breaking rules. Mark Twain, you want to do nice short sentences, right? Mark Twain has, I actually timed out one of his paragraphs in, or one of his sentences in uh, Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's Court. The thing is like a page and a half. Short sentences? The guy was a journalistic writer, but he had no problem basically extending his sentences for as long as he thought the sentence would go on. You know, that's an obvious example of knowing when to break the rules. Right. Um, it's just basically have fun with it. Right. So. Okay. Makes a lot of sense, really. I mean, yeah. You, you, you know, you don't want to be stuck with a three paragraph story. You got to sort of build character. You got to build the storyline. You got to build everything that goes with it. So, you know, describing a smile is, is, you know, it's going to have to be part of it somehow, whether it's with the yeah. eyes or with the, with, with, with the. And the thing the is, there's the not mouth. just one type of smile, you know, you <laughs> can smile outrageously, you can smile hungrily, literally, um, slyly. There's even a sarcastic smile. All of these work. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of how you define your particular smile. And that goes, mm -hmm. of course, back to the adverbs thing. Yeah. So. Sometimes adverbs are necessary. Mm -hmm. So, are there are there any sort of uh, cliches that you dislike in uh, in the stories that you that you've come across? Oh, we could go on for that one. Jeez, I spent way too much time as an actual reviewer. <laughs> the well, top three. Maybe, the top maybe maybe instead of going on forever, maybe you have a couple of. Just like you said, the top three examples. are the person who's basically woke just for the sake of being woke. Mm 
you know, I don't like coincidences. I think you, you have one, maybe two coincidences per book or per story, and that's about it. Anything more than that, you're just basically – you're not building a story. You're just basically throwing things at the wall to see what sticks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, of course, there's the dreaded – and I'm sure I'll put this one – the person who sticks way too much to what they think is going to sell, and that never works out the way they want it to. You know, they try to. I, it, as a writer, you need to sell to a market. Don't get me wrong. You're always going to have that stuff in your story that's just there to basically, you know, to sell. Okay, so I I know you've done a lot of work, uh, a lot of books. Um, where can people follow follow your work and um? You know, if they if if they're interested in, in picking up anything that you've done, you know. Um, the one I'm trying to get hardcore on right now is Medium. Um, basically, that's got a lot of original articles. Plus, I'm taking the stuff from the writing book and porting that over there every so often. Um, if you're in America, I'm definitely on Vela all over the place. And of course, the obligatory books on Amazon and other booksellers. So I'm not really not that hard. I mean, straight up, if you can't find me, you're really seriously not looking. Okay. All right. Good to know that it's out there for everybody to go check it out. Uh, yeah. uh, the two books of Amazon, just because they're, I thought you guys might get a kick out of, is I've got one book on uh, character design that basically just goes through and goes through all the various things up of how to create characters, you know, their backstories, description, that sort of thing. Again, I keep my mostly a con strangely enough, I'm visual based. So I tend to even though I do a lot of comic book stuff, I'm definitely it sort of spills over into other areas. Um the other course is also have a comic book Bible. That actually helps pretty much any writer go through and Helps you set up. You know what a TV Bible is, right? The the TV Bible? No. Yeah. You That's mean the guide, is it? Every TV show has what they call a Bible. Oh, I see. This is basically where it goes to the character histories. What's important, you know, character the overall history of the show, and basically a lot of the cool trivia about the show. You know, if you need anything to know about, say Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you can actually get the writers were actually given a big thick document that details out all the characters, the character histories and the mythos of the, the show in general. That's mm -hmm. sort of what I have a character Bible or character, sorry, how to create comic books thing that actually helps you set up that, uh, the Bible even helps you set up a vi the visual side of it. Ah, is um, that out there available for people to go check out? Yeah, it's, um, Available on PDF, strangely enough, which always cracks me up, but you want, definitely want to get the uh, paperback version. And, and be, get, get that on Amazon? Yeah. So uh, how to create a comic book, handbook. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd seen, I, I'd seen that. So, so, you've, so you've made some comic books as well? Yeah, even though, if, in fact, um, yeah, Sex Percussions is actually available on Amazon. That was a weird one. Somebody basically, they were having a naming contest on uh, Gaia Online way back when. And so they suggested sex percussions. I'm like, dude, I'm stealing that. And they're like, okay, cool, go for it. And that ended up being a, uh, sh sh uh, ended up being a short graphic novel about uh, three elemental mages, uh, surprise, mystery, and construction, of the shaman, and his pet mage. Uh, all trying to save the world against a uh, Mayan goddess. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. So did all you, in the 1920s. Did you have to? Uh, did you do the art also? Did you have to talk to somebody about like doing the art for you? Uh, no, somebody else. Uh, Katie Sweet, a great artist, uh, ended up doing the art for the book. Okay, awesome. Hmm. So, hmm. yeah. Well, cool. That's well, definitely one of the weirder comic books out there. <laughs> well a lot of some people like the weird stuff so yeah uh, oh yeah <laughs> well this this has been been great and um yeah i'm glad we got to talk about uh the writing the process um 
you know, there's a lot that goes into it and uh, it's a lot of fun. Like you said, a lot of work. Um, so we just uh, appreciate you having uh, coming on and talking to us about it. And we uh, wish you all the best of luck in getting your stuff out there. And we hope people check it out. All right. Thanks. All right. Glad to be here. Yep. Thanks for being Thank on, so James. Much. All right. Bye. Yay! <laughs> Comics! <laughs>